Can a lens from an aircraft gun camera be adapted to an Olympus Micro Four Thirds digital camera? Join me today and find out. Hey, welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. One of the things I love about shooting Olympus mirrorless digital cameras is the ability to adapt just all kinds of vintage lenses to these cameras. There are adapters available uh, very inexpensively, often as little as $10 or $20 online. And you can adapt just all kinds of lenses. I have all kinds of vintage Canon, Nikon, Minolta, Olympus, Pentax, you name it. I have all kinds of these lenses that I can adapt to the, the Olympus cameras and they provide, each one has their own unique look and they provide a, a vintage look to the images that you really can't get with modern lenses. Um, so they're, they're really fun to use and so I'm always on the lookout for something new and unique that I can adapt to my cameras. And so I saw a listing the other day online for an aircraft gun camera. Now the thing that really caught my eye was not the camera, but the lens, I couldn't really tell what it was the way the picture was made. But what caught my eye was the lens cap. So the, the camera was priced very affordably, very cheap, and I decided to take a chance on it. And so when I received the camera, I bought it, when I received the camera, I pulled off the lens cap and lo and behold, there sat a 35 millimeter F35 lights Sumeron. And it was very securely mounted. There were clamps keeping it from unscrewing. It was a screw mount lens. It um, even had a screw that kept the focus lever from moving off the infinity mark. And um, so I had to undo all that to get the lens off, got it unscrewed. Then I noticed the lens was kind of hazy inside, so I had to take it apart and clean it. Um, but once all that's done, now I have a 35 millimeter lights F35 Sumer on. It's a very tiny little lens. Now, like I said, adapters are available. I already had one, so I can screw that on. And now this lens will fit my uh, Olympus cameras. I can uh, mount it right on there, just like it was an Olympus lens. Fits right on. And um, we have that. Now these lenses um, are noted for having issues with flare compared to modern lenses. So bought a lens hood to help protect it from flare. Now I've got a, a neat little setup that will work on these ca this camera. So the one of the kind of neat things about this lens that kind of fascinates me is it was made in 1953, uh, probably not used in the Korean War. The Korean War ended in the middle of 53, somewhere in there. So um, might have seen some use in Vietnam. It might have just been used stateside for training. But these these gun cameras were used to photograph. You know, when the machine guns fired on a fighter plane the gun camera would photograph where the bullets were going. They could see how well the pilot was doing in terms of shooting. And it might have just been used for training or something. But it's just really fascinating to me, the history of this lens. Now, the, these lenses really, um, like I say, they all have a unique look. But one of the cool things about using vintage lenses on a crop sensor camera is that, you know, most of your lenses, all lenses, really, perform less well around the edges than they do in the center. And vintage lenses are more that way than modern lenses. So the worst part of the image is going to be, you know, in the corners, at the edges, around the periphery of the image. But when you mount one of these kind of lenses on a crop sensor camera, whether it's Micro Four Thirds or APS-C, you're not using the edges of the image. You're using the central part of it. So you're getting the best part of that lens, the best quality part of the lens, the image, um, when you do that. So this has been really fun to use. It's um, being 35 millimeter on micro four thirds, you have to double the focal length to get the equivalent focal length compared to 35 millimeter full frame. So this 35 millimeter lens becomes equivalent to a 70 millimeter lens uh, on a full frame camera. But it's a very usable focal length. Uh, I really enjoyed using it. It's uh, just been a lot of fun. So um, let's take a look at some of the images that I uh, have taken with it. And I'll kind of walk you through those and um, we'll see what you think. 
Now these first images are not actually from that lens, but there are pictures of the gun camera with the lens mounted on it. I want you to see what that looked like. It was a 35 millimeter motion picture camera. It had a large magazine that held large rolls and even had a, a viewfinder where you could view through the lens to line the camera up. Now these uh, carousel horses uh, were shot on an overcast day, but the colors are just really beautiful. I love the way this lens renders colors. The lens shows just great detail. It's very sharp, even out to the edges. And of course, with a crop sensor, you're not really seeing the edges, but it's very sharp. This uh, crane is one of my favorites. Lots of detail. The store and uh, the Mexican restaurant that follows, again, just show the beautiful nature that this lens renders colors. It's just one of my favorites for that. Now this old car kind of faded in the, the decorative paint that's on it, but the lens just really renders even these pastel shades just really beautifully. And then this old truck, it's just mostly rust, but the lens shows great detail. If you could read um, the middle D in Dodge actually says Made in USA. It's, there's just tremendous detail in this lens. Thanks for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed the information about this interesting lens and its history and enjoyed the images. As, you know, I always enjoy using vintage lenses. They provide a unique look and character to your pictures that you just can't get with modern lenses. So I'm always looking for something new and interesting to, uh, to try out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, please do like and subscribe on the channel. That'll help it grow. And I hope to see you on the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.